Hello everybody and welcome on today's video. Exactly a year ago I air layered tree field maples and uh, the roots formed. I don't know how well but I know that there are some. So um, I, I let it uh, for the whole winter because when you um, air layer a tree and then you separate it in, in, uh, in the autumn or in mid of the summer the, the, the roots are not uh, strong and hard and then when you try to comb them out which is something you should do I think it's my idea about field may about uh, air layers um, well you're gonna ruin the roots so it's better to let them uh, on whole winter so we are going to get the air layers out of the plastics and uh, have a look so I have three uh, different uh, sizes Let's start with the smallest. So I always use black plastic. Um, some people say that it's better because then you have uh, the sun that attracts the heat. And when you have more heat, you have more roots. So I don't know. Uh, I, I think that it works with a whole lot of uh, things. But I use black plastic. So two wires. Now I'm going to open up the air layer. So what do we have here? Well we have uh, quite a lot of roots and as you see the roots are still white so it's all and we have a little snail. Oh it's a dead one. Oh. And now I'm going to open up this uh, root ball. I think I'm going to speed this up because it's quite boring watch or maybe just skip this part so the soil is now removed and uh, I washed the roots and you can clearly see here the place where the bark was removed so technically under this part there should not be roots so I should be able to cut back at least this piece and then have a look at the roots that I uh, have formed, comb them out and plant the tree. Um, I seem to have some luck because I have good roots here and I hoped that this was, was going to be the front. So when you air layer a tree it's always interesting to always think about the future and telling that yeah if I can keep this as a top this might be a, a good tapering uh, point. So. Um, yeah, I think that's nice. I don't think I will ever use this branch. Uh, well, let's cut it off. It's going to be easier to move it. And then, well, this can heal um, this year. So maybe just going to nibble away this. Okay, so this might become a better transition. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, separate this uh, little piece here, which is difficult um, because you don't want to destroy the roots that you have. So I'm going to nibble parts away of it. Okay, so this is the little stump. Tree made some new suckers, which I will not use. And now it is time to clean up this wound a little and open up the root ball and spread the roots. So I've seen a whole lot of air, la air layering videos and when the air layer is separated, they put it in, in moss or sphagnum moss and, uh, or a big pot. 
and then they let it grow for years and years and years and then you will end up with a horrible root base and the whole purpose of air layering will be lost because that's one of the best things about air layers is if you got good root spread nice radial root pattern so when you separate your air layer you want to work on the roots immediately and that's why i keep them all winter <coughs> so i have a few good roots i have crossing roots which are not good i have places where there are no roots places where there are no roots there you can immediately um, take some action and wound that part again so that new roots might grow there like so very bad roots should be removed I think that these two here are going straight down and there's a better one on top so I'm going to remove these ones these two and that's probably gonna be it so well and the rest I can open up I, I will push it down on in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the big pot where I'm going to plant it push it down like this spread them nicely and plant them but first of all I need to do the other two so this will be uh, waiting in a bucket of water so I'm going to clean up this try to get as much as the wood off from the bottom so that you can plant your trees and work on the root spread already okay that's one now that's the second one sadly this one has no branches here oh yeah but i thought that the, the thickness of this trunk was interesting and well probably it will get some new branches this year so not a big problem and I'm just going to do exactly the same yeah it's obvious that we have lots of roots and I will clean this up open this up wash this and do the same with the third one and then we can have a look at, at the roots and how I could try to improve them so it's going to take me well quite some time because you don't want to tear the roots apart I really should do that with care so piece by piece I'll be back uh, in a second for you this is the biggest one and I cannot say that I'm impressed with the root formation um, you see here we have a bridge that formed from the removed cambium to the old cambium and we have a even bigger bridge here which means that it was my fault that it didn't work because uh, these bridges form when you do not remove enough bark so I probably should have removed a whole lot more so this is what the tree does to bring the sap back to the to the roots and yeah well when this happens there's no root formation of course uh, I must have done a better job on the other side where we have um, a few roots but also if you can see it here again a bridge so the bridge is the problem here so now I need to remove um, this part and I'm going to plant this uh, it, it will work I'm sure of that uh, I'll save every, every root that I have here so uh, I'm going to take the big loppers it's going to be easier oh here they are 
well it's going to be easier but also I must take care not to damage the few existing roots that I have okay Hmm. So, let's take some time to do this right. And not hasty. I think that's good. This is strong. Okay. <clears throat> So, I didn't ruin any of the existing roots, now I'm going to take my concave cutters and get to the point where I have living tissue. So when I plant it, There will be probably new roots. So let me just finish this. So this tree doesn't have a whole lot of roots. Um, it, it is more than sufficient to keep it alive. And I opened up a whole lot of uh, the the bark here can even do some more just to be creating circumstances to have new root formation yeah. I'm trying to do it right for the camera but I'm, I'm right-handed so it's not going to work that way but of course um, in this case there will be no root reduction because this would be inappropriate in this case so in the bucket it goes and then uh, we'll have a look at the other one that has a quite spectacular amount of uh, roots which is of course very nice and that's this one so here we see a almost perfect radial root pattern around the place where I took away some of the bark. And we see some of the roots here that are sticking up. So uh, when you have the choice, well, remove what you do not need. So I don't need that. Don't need that. I have good roots here, good roots here, little one here. So these two are not needed. So I already have a very, very good radial root system. Lots of roots. This one is going straight down. So let's remove that. A whole lot of roots here. One way too high. This one's a little too high, so I'm going to remove it. Because I have another one here, which I can position. So that's great. Now the tricky part with a, a root base like this, which is, I think, a very nice start for a bonsai. I don't think I'm going to use this one. There's another one right under it. So here the, the problem is uh, separating this without damaging the roots. So yeah, it's going to be uh, nibbling away the wood like I did before. So piece by piece. And well, I'll be back when it's done. So it is quite complicated to remove a whole lot of the stump here without damaging the roots 
but that's not a big deal because this will probably rot away and when I open the roots like I'm going to do right now these roots will grow and become more and more flat and uh, obviously when they are flat this whole thing will be more accessible next year and because it will be rotted it will be easier to cut so that's what I have as a root base and I must say this doesn't look bad at all so yeah success on the tree trees but not everyone as good as the other which is of course to be expected now because this one is doing so well I really can do a primary root selection and root cutting so that the roots develop a little more evenly okay so let's plan this all now I'm going to start with the tree with the best root base because it is a good root base so I want it to be uh, perfect and to have a good spot to grow in so this looks like it is a good spot so I'm going to make a little hill here and remove some of the soil around so I'll place the tree on top of that and it is important now to open up these roots because that's how they are going to grow for a whole year and it would be stupid not to guide them where you want them you will regret it next time you get it out of the ground that's for sure so no crossing roots it doesn't really matter that they are flat at this point because next time you plant them you can even push this thing a little more down And another reason why I don't separate my air layers in, in the autumn is because, well, now it's the growing season. This tree has a whole year to recover. So here it is. So now the second best roots that I have were the one on the first tree that I worked on today. So again, a little hill it's this tree so I'm going to plant it with the the so-called front it's not really a good front for the moment but okay so here uh, it's obvious that I need to get a whole lot of soil out of the way to open up this root base So the whole point of this video, I must say, is to show how you deal with an air layer, not just plant it in a big pot and wait for, for some miracle with your roots, because you're always going to end up with a, a bad root base if you, if you don't spread it. And that would be a shame after a year of waiting. so getting some more soil just to fix it by the way this is a mix of uh, garden compost and sand in these pots and I when you um, when you have big pots like that it is a really good mix it, it keeps slightly moist but um, when you get your trees out 
it's very easy to remove the old soil. So now for the last one. Which is a really cool big tree already, but yeah, the roots are what they are. It's not great, but we'll work with what we have. So again, opening up the roots. You don't want to repot your trees every year so every time you get them out of the ground you must improve on the roots like so well not bad so now i have three nice field maples ready for the growing season and i'm just adding a whole lot of soil Probably uh, they will develop roots up to the point where they are in the soil, so I'll, I'll get too much roots again that I will have to cut off next year. But of course it doesn't matter at this moment, it only matters that the, tree, that the trees grow well, and that they are stable. You see when you bump it, it's not supposed to move because you will break the new roots. So a little too much soil is, well, not a problem. So that's all I have to do, just putting this soil around it. And that's, uh, that's it for today. So uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.